Again, welcome. Today is uh, March 25th. This is lab three, so the instructions for the lab. This is actually a short lab in terms of the instructions. However, in terms of the work, it's still a quite sizable amount of work that needs to be done to complete it. So I'm hoping that you guys, and I know a lot of you are not uh, alive, uh, that you guys will uh, go through the instructions. And if you have any questions, please let me know. This is again, a graded labs are worth 25% of your overall grade. So if you don't do labs, of course, you're going to impact your grade drastically. You really don't want to do that. So it's very, very important to take care of the labs. They are only second in terms of weight to actual exams. So uh, you have to really take them, take them seriously, very, very seriously if you expect to pass this class. So again, about the labs. So again, the participation is still very important. You have to do the work. If you don't do the work, you're, uh, you're going to basically uh, not get properly credit for it. Anyway, so let me share with you the instructions. I hope that you guys also, when you go to uh, Canvas, you will see the instructions along with the rubric so that you guys are uh, following through it. This is what I really don't like about the fact that we're doing things on, online is because people are not synchronously and that is not good. Anyway, so let me get to the lab for instructions. Physical, I mean, lab three, resistance. So let me get from the beginning. Do you guys see what it says, lab three, Ohm's law? Yes. Okay, very good, very good. So uh, basically, this is the instructions. This is a little bit of background that you guys remember from the lectures from chapter 25 and now chapter 26. This is Ohm's law. I mean, we know at least in lecture that we discovered another version of it, which is really the real Ohm's law, but that leads to this one where the current, the current and the voltage are proportional to one another. That means you double the voltage, you get twice as much current and vice versa. And this is a linear dependency, which is just a line that passes through the origin, meaning for zero current, I should have zero voltage for that, okay? Usually the cause is the voltage and the effect is the current. So this law usually is written as I equals to V over R. How good of a conductor will determine that slope? Will determine basically uh, how big the, uh, the current needs to be in the, in, the, in, the, in the wire. So if you have low resistance, you will have a huge current for the same voltage. So this is what this expression is. Uh, when we go through the derivation like we did in class, we ended up with an expression for R or the resistance in terms of the resistivity of the material, every material has its own characteristic resistance. And that is rho. That is the one that we arrived to basically using the theory. And then the length of the wire plays a role in this case and the cross section of the wire. So uh, the smaller the cross section, basically the higher the resistance. Think of the freeway phase, basically. If you are on a wide range freeway, you can handle more traffic than if you are on a very narrow freeway then in this case, it can handle just a limited number of uh, cars. So that is basically how you can think in terms of resistance. Resistivity is measured in ohms meter because this one is in meter, this one in meter squared, and you have an ohm meter in here, ohm times meter times meter, that meter squared divided by meter squared cancel, and you will be left with the units for the resistance, which is in ohms. The unit for it is this capital M. Anyway, this is the theory that we did in class from chapter 25, and actually we get also into uh, resistors in parallel, I'm sorry, here, and resistors in, uh, in, in, uh, in series. So resistors in series, they, their R equivalent is just the sum of the Rs. So if you put a bunch of resistors, one after the other, after the other, after the other, you end up with the, uh, I had some resistors in here, I don't know where I put them, here, okay? So these are three resistors, actually. They are different values. I don't know if you can tell that they are different colors or not, depending on the screen in there. They are different shades of colors. They're connected one to next to another, but they are not actually connected physically. I mean, there is no connection. This is one resistor in here, followed by another resistor, followed by another resistor. So they're actually disconnected right now. If I want to connect them in series, so basically what I need to do is, if I can find some wires in here, Obviously, this is not for this purpose. OK. 
okay. Let me just basically connect them right now, roughly, okay? So basically I have to do them. Here is the deal. What I'm saying is the following. If after this one, I go to the next one and do the same thing. After that one, I go to the next one. So the current will come from one end here, for example, goes through this resistor, jumps to this one, goes through this resistor, jumps to this one and goes through this. If, if, if I connect these two ends in here, basically this one and that one, and this one and that one, I have them in series. So the R equivalent, the values in here, I don't think you can see them, but one of them is five ohms, the one in below five ohms, 10 ohms and 15 ohms. So if I do that connection, then I have five plus 15, that's 20 plus 12, 10, that's gonna be 30 ohms. So they're in series in this situation, okay? If on the other hand, I connect them, this one to this one and the reds by themselves and the uh, 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 black by themselves, then in this case, I have them actually in, 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 uh, in, uh, in parallel and their R equivalent should be one over uh, five plus one over 10 plus one over 15 and the common denominator is 15. So it's three over 15 plus, oh no, the common denominator is not 15, I'm sorry, it's 30, okay? So it's gonna be six over 30 plus three over 30 plus two over 50, 30. So two plus six, that's eight, plus three, that's 11. 11 over 30 inverted. So it's gonna be slightly over than three ohms. Actually, it's gonna be 3.333 ohms if I have them connected this way, which indicates that then, because one of them is five, that's the lowest then 10 and then 15. So the equivalent resistance, if I connect this, color and this color, they're going to be in parallel and the equivalent resistance in here is 3.333 ohms. Whereas if I connect them the first way here and then here, this two, and basically the other two, I'll try to get my hands in it and leave the last two in here just to uh, for the input outputs in here, then in this case, they are going to be what? Uh, 30 ohms, okay? So this is the idea behind the parallel and the uh, and series resistors. You have to remember that the resistors, they add up not like 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 uh, like capacitors. They're actually opposite to ca how capacitors work. Uh, it's a good idea to leave the, uh, the objective, but uh, you have to be mindful of the fact that probably that's what we're going to be testing. We're going to be testing Ohm's law, this one. We're going to also be testing the fact that we're gonna take resistors and put them in series. We're going to take resistors also and put them in parallel. The biggest mistake, at least I see in exams, is people forget to invert the answer. They invert, they take the inverse of whatever the resistance plus the inverse plus the inverses. And instead of taking the inverse of the answer, they keep everything in there and they get into trouble for that. They get wrong uh, resistance and then everything else will follow through from there, downhill basically. For this one, it's kind of easy in this case, okay? Here is the deal about the objective. The objective cannot be more than a paragraph. It should not really have bulleted items. It should not have uh, any more than basically a, a precise description of what needs to be done in this lab, okay? Uh, it needs also to have proper English in there to be the idea to be clear, okay? That's the point with it. I really don't grade on English because I'm not basically good at it. But the point being in there is that the, I, I also watch for the information that you're trying to convey, it has to be clear, okay? That is the key even here. Take advantage of the fact that this actually is a rich text environment that help you at least with the spelling. Granted that some of the things that we use, for example, in physics are kind of uh, not uh, acceptable for uh, different spellers, for example, potential meter. Ah, it took it. I thought it's going to complain about it, okay? How about, uh, I think some of these words now, this is actually a word that I was afraid that may not take it. This one also acceptable. How about this? Oh man, it's not helping. It's probably, I thought that it is, oh no, no, yeah, it's complaining about it. That's good, but this one is good. So look at the spelling, please make sure that the word, this is actually a real stat. This is what we're gonna be using in this lab, okay? I was just trying to, to chest the spell checking, okay? 
Again, you need your name and the name of everybody who works in this lab. Please make sure you, uh, you include that in here. And then uh, you, you click on the simulation. Before you click on the simulation, let me tell you basically what the lab is all about. And then we're going to go to the simulation to see how that works. Okay. So this is how it looks like, more or less. When you're in here, you're going to choose a battery. And they tell you to specifically pick up a battery of 120 volts. That's the maximum voltage. You're going to pick up a voltmeter from here to measure the voltages. You're going to pick up an M meter also to measure the currents. And you're going to pick up two resistances from here, R1 and R2. R1 is here. And this resistor is going to be a variable resistor. Practically, you really need a switch also in here to control the current. Technically, because you're going to be putting and removing uh, uh, resistors if we're doing this in, on campus. So what you do in this case, you turn on and off the switch, basically, to make sure that there is no live wires in there to work with electrical uh, circuits. And then you switch, you change things. This is a rheostat, meaning that it's a variable uh, resistor. Usually you have a slider on it to change its value. Let me see if I can show you one. I think I found one in my bag in here. This is how it looks like, more or less. So when you change this, let me remove the and stop sharing. When you when you move this on one side. Basically, when you slide it one way or the other, if this is your input current, and this is your this is your input current, your output current, or from here to there, you're catching it in here, so you're changing the resistance in here. That's all. Okay. This is a conducting wire, and this is what this is actually a potentiometer. Okay. But that's also it can act as a variable resistor. You're changing the value for it. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to be doing this in the lab. In a sense, what we're trying to do in here is, let me go back into sharing the screen. So what we're saying in here is change this, uh, this resistance uh, to get different readings for the voltage and the current. That's all. So what you do in this case, you start with 5 ohms in here. And you start with a lower value of the rheostat. And you take the readings of the voltmeter and the ammeter, and you put them in the table. Here is where they go. So you have an R1, which is 5 ohms. You have the voltage, and you have the current. You have the voltage, the current, the voltage, the current, the voltage, and the current, and so on and so forth, until you finish with them. You average these quantities and put the voltage average in here. You average these quantities, and you put the, uh, the current average in here. Now you're done with that part. You come back in here, and you change. If you look at the instruction, uh, you change uh, R1 now to a different value, to uh, 10 ohms. So you change this value to another 10 ohms, and you do the same thing now. You're going to put voltage current, voltage current, voltage current, voltage current, voltage current, voltage current, six times, six different readings. By changing the rheostat, by changing this value, once you do that, then you have to take the average for the uh, voltage and the average for the uh, current. Now, what you do in this case, the, this instruction here to tell you to take R1 and R2 and connect them in series. So now you're going to remove the, uh, the, 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 the voltmeter and bring another resistor in here and make sure that the second resistor is actually 10 ohms. And this one stays at 5 ohms. And you connect them one after the other in series. And you plug in the voltmeter from the one end of the one of the resistors to the other end of the resistor. And now we do the same readings now for basically when they are in series. One, the voltage current, voltage current. By changing the rheostat still, that's how you control the voltage and the current. Then you take the average, and you take the average of the current in here. Finally, you go back into them in here, and you change their configuration to put them in parallel, actually, with one another, the 10 ohms and the 5 ohms. And basically put the voltage across both of them, which is the same voltage because they are in parallel at this point. And you do the reading again by changing the rheostat in here in this case. And uh, in doing so, you're going to have different values for the voltage and the current by changing the value of that the resistance uh, in front of them. And you'll have six values by increasing it six, uh, up to six times, OK? 
there is no logic in here how big it needs to be. Just basically have di different distinct readings. That's why we put the voltage in here to be 120 volts. 120 volts so that we can have sensitive equipment enough to give me high enough voltages with high enough precision. Because of the fact that they have a five ohms in here, if I really use 120 volts, I probably will start smell uh, smoke in here because this is a very low resistance for this one. The current would be too high. As a matter of fact, six amps right now, according to this uh, picture, which is a lot of current for this uh, for this application. And that's why you need a switch. Even for low current, you need a switch because this is too much of a current. So anyway, you have different values for when it's parallel. And again, you're going to come in here and put your averages, OK? At this point, you're going to calculate R1 by taking this average over this average. So you take the current in here, and you take the voltage. Voltage over uh, should be R1. Remember, it's supposed to be 5 ohms. Are you getting 5 ohms? OK? And you do the same thing for R2. You take this average over this average, and you check your answer. Are you getting 10 ohms? Okay. If it is too much, then you try to explain it what's going on. If this was a real lab that we're doing it on campus, you may not. You may get a big error because of the fact that uh, that uh, you let it stand for a long time. So, in other words, the 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 the. Uh, The picture, the, the, the line is going to deviate from being linear. So we might get actually a different value because the resistance in this case is going to be off. Okay. And you now you do the same thing for our equivalent. So calculate our equivalent for the series and the parallel configurations, law based, and, uh, and uh, verify Ohm's law. Again, so I said that you take R1 plus R2 for the case of series, which should be about 15 ohms. So this should be about 15 ohms when you do that because 10 plus 5 is 15. So this ratio should be 15. And this ratio now should be the average, the, the 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10. 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 is exactly what? Uh, 3 over uh, 10, which is, again, 3.333 ohms. Okay. So are you getting 3.33 3, 3 ohms or not? The ratio should be about 3. So the voltage in here over the current should be a little over 3. Again, that is what this is supposed to be. Compare the two. Okay. You're going to plot the function in here, the current as a function of the of the uh, I mean the voltage as a function of the current. Okay, you typically we do v as in the y-axis and the i in the, in the x-axis. So i will be the what looks like it's the independent variable and v is the dependent variable. In either case, for both r1 and r2, you're going to find two different lines with two different slopes. One of them should be 5 ohms, or roughly 5 ohms. And the other one should be uh, uh, 10 ohms, or roughly 10 ohms. And both of them, technically, they should be passing by the origin. You may find the y-intercept in your case, but that's due to the error, basically. Okay. And you're going to do both the R equivalent also for both the parallel and the series circuit, too. So you'll have two graphs in here. Make sure when you do the graphs, the x-axis are properly labeled, and the points are clear. Points, the six points that you collected from your experiment are clearly indicated in here. So here I need to see 12.6 for each line. And in here I need to see 12.6 for each line, basically. Okay. And again, we have now a new way of doing it. Do the best fit. So we're going to do the trend lines or the best fit and find the slope. And once we find the slope, we're going to check the slope also. Does it match the uh, theory or not? Okay. Are we getting a line or not? Okay. So this is if you do it on the graph, if you do it by manually. If you want to do it with Excel, please make sure also Excel is properly labeled. And you can append Excel for your, uh, for your case in here. If you have difficulty with this one, please let me know to make sure that you work out all the difficulties in there. Labs reports are not supposed to be exams. They're supposed to teach you stuff so that you learn how to do the labs first and then report on it. So those are the two objectives, the two main skills that I need you to guys to develop from these things. Okay, so that is basically for this part. And again, uh, you're going to get the slope now for R1, for R1, the slope for R2, the slope for R equivalent for series, the slope for R equivalent in parallel, and you report all of the data in here. Okay, and then you're going to look at the values that you already have measured from before. in these steps, okay? 
and you compare the two and how well do they agree? Is there like a discrepancy or, and you do basically take the difference divided by the sum of uh, the average of the sum, the difference in absolute value. Okay. So we don't care about negative or positive. It doesn't matter which one is bigger, which one is smaller. Okay. And so on and so forth. And you report the errors in here. Now, here is an important question. Are these resistors ohmic or non-ohmic? Meaning, are they linear or not linear? If they satisfy Ohm's law, if this relationship is true, we call them ohmic resistors. This resistor is behave like Ohm's law. If this relationship is not true in a sense that it's not correct to say that it's a line like this one that passes by the, uh, or, by, uh, by the origin, then in this case, we have a problem that we need to account for, that this is a non-ohmic resistor. A big example of non-ohmic resistor, uh, non-ohmic devices actually is, for example, the diode. The diode is an example of a non-ohmic uh, res uh, device because if I do uh, V equal to uh, as a function of I, or I as a function of E, actually I'm going to find an exponential in here. If I do V as a function of I, I will find a, a, a natural log in here. So this is not ohmic. Okay, this is non-ohmic, okay, it's not linear. What kind of things do I have in here? A bunch of resistors. This, this device in here, which is transistor in here, or integrated circuit is actually non-ohmic too. So that is basically what we have to remember in here, okay? But this, they should be perfectly fine. There should be no problem. If you have a problem, please let me know with them. And then, Analyze the data from the table to justify. Basically, are the best fit lines or not, okay? Usually there is an R squared value for your data if you happen to do Excel. If you happen to do Excel, it will tell you if it's how good it is. If it's closer to 199.9%, for example, that is actually a perfect fit. If it's 98%, it's still actually a very good fit and so on and so forth. So that is how you can tell whether or not it's good or not. And then finally the conclusion. So this is in a nutshell the lab instruction. So let's let me stop sharing that screen and share with you the actual simulation. You can find it. Where is it? I lost it in here. Show more. And I don't see it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to click on it in here when we go there. And we're going to pick up lab. And the first thing I usually do in here, I don't want to, first of all, I don't want to see the electrons, honestly. I want to just see the flow of the, the electricity. And I want to go back to the symbols in here because it tries to make it more realistic, but that's not how it looks like. Again, the, the resistors are color coded and so on and so forth. But I'm going to go the symbolic representation. So I'm going to pick up a wire. Do I need a wire now? Yeah, probably I would. So I have a battery in here. Leave the direction this way is fine okay, because this is a DC battery. So I need another wire in here connect the junction in here, make sure it's long enough in here. And then we need uh, probably a resistor right there and there. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, we need another resistance, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine, keep it in here. We need the real start, remember? Try to align it as nicely as you can. And just for spacing now. We don't want the resistors to be too cramped to one another. Now, this is the resistor that we want to, to work with. Next to it, and again, I want to space it a little bit, okay? I'm going to put the switch, doesn't matter where you put the switch, I'm gonna put it in here. And finally, I'm going to have this wire in here and another wire. And let me open the circuit first. Why did I close it? The minute you touch the uh, switch, it closes, okay? So if I touch it now, it closes. I don't mean to do that. So I'm going to open it again. Okay. 
Eh, just as long as it's lined up enough. Okay. I'm sorry, there is a missing piece in here. So let me cut the uh, link here. We need a uh, actually a, a meter. Let me remove the link in there too. Let me put this aside for right now. We need an emitter. The emitter must be in series with the circuit, okay? It must be, the current must run through it before it's measured. So we need that. And we need also a voltmeter. So here is the voltmeter. At this point, if I connect it to the ends of this resistor, I got zero. Let me show the values because I want to see what's going on. We need this one to be 120 volts, which is the maximum, okay? We need this one to be starting number. It's fine, actually, uh, where we are right now. We don't have to change it that much, okay? This one, though, must be five. So I'm going to change its value down to five. To control it, to use this, this thing in here, okay? Now we have a five volt. They say also to have a tiny resistance if you read the instruction for the wires and pick up a, a, resist, a resistance for the, uh, for the battery between zero and two ohms. So right now it's one ohm. So if I can pick up two, that's fine. As long as I'm between zero and two, I'm good, okay? So now we have everything that is set up the way it's supposed to. So at this point, I need to turn on the switch. And I see the current right now flying through this one is 6.89 amps and the voltage is 34.44 volts. I need to record this data. Then I'm gonna change the value of the rheostat to a different value. And now I have different reading on the voltage, 26.76. The current now is 5.35, okay? It went down because this went up. So that's typical, that's fine. But both of them go down or up. So it's gonna be a linear line exactly how it's predicted, okay? As a matter of fact, we can take 26.76 divided by 5.5 to just test uh, what that number is equal to. Let me check it. So uh, 26.76 divide that by 5.35. And the answer is 5.001869. So it's basically, actually it's a perfect line at this point, okay? So let me change the resistors, uh, the, uh, this resistor now to a different value. So I got two points so far. Of course, you're gonna do your own numbers, okay? So now for 23, I have 20.39 20 and I have 4.08. So again, that's a third point, 20.39 divided by 4.08. This is 4.9975. So it's basically going to fluctuate around 5 ohms. Okay. And so on and so forth. So basically, I'm going to continue with these numbers in here until six times. Since I'm done with this one now, I'm going to open the circuits, cut off the current. I'm going to change this value now to 10. Perfect. I landed exactly on it. Drop this one back to a starting point again. That's fine, 12 is fine. Now close the circuits and repeat the process. So now I have 51.24 and I have in here 5.12. That's point one. I'm gonna change this current in here to this resistor to another value, 29.67. And in here I have 2.97. Change this value now, third point, 41, 22.89 and 2.29 and so on and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna get six values in here. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna stop this one, rem uh, remove the uh, volt, uh, voltmeter, come in here and cut this junction and actually probably cut it from here too and remove this wire completely. I actually, I can delete it, okay? Probably I need more spacing in here, okay? Why? Because I'm gonna put another resistor in there. So I'm gonna take this one in here, connect it in there and make sure the reading on this one is actually five ohms. Okay, perfect, five ohms. Now I need another wire. Okay. I need to connect my voltmeter first. So it's between this point and this point. Both of them are in series now. You have to be careful in here how you connect your, your, your voltmeter. If I connect the, the black one in here, and the red one in there, the number will be negative, that's all. 
because the current actually is flowing this way and I'm reading it as if it's coming this way. So let's me show you that this actually should be a negative number and it is a negative number. So let me stop the current, move my voltmeter in the right direction. Always a positive is facing the positive of the battery. So here is a positive. And now if I read this current now, oh, I'm sorry, I need to drop this, this value to a starting point again. That's fine, 14 is good, okay? So I'm gonna close the circuit now. I'm gonna read the voltage is 59.14 between the two resistors and 3.94. If I do the divisions in here, 59.14 divided by 3.94, it's 15.01, which I'm expecting it to be 15 ohms, which is exactly how much it's supposed to be, okay? Let me change now the value to a different point in here. 24 is fine, 44.52, that's another point. 44.52 divided by 2.97. Again, I'm supposed to plot this one, it's 14.98, okay? I'm supposed to plot this number. So I have two, two pieces of data, I need actually uh, four more. So I need to change this one to another number, do the reading, three, four, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm changing this one in there, okay? Now it's 55, I have another reading, that's four. I have another reading, now 67. I have another reading for this numbers in here. And uh, now this is probably the last one I'm gonna have is 18.674, that's 80 and so on and so forth, okay? Since I'm done now collecting my six data, I'm going to stop this one, return back to a starting point in here, 11 is good, okay? And plug my uh, voltmeter. Always leave the ammeter in there because that's in the good place for it. Okay, you don't have to mess with it. Come in here and remove the connection. Come in here and remove this connection and move this one out, out there and move this one in here. Okay, immediately next to it. It's good, like this one. Actually, it's probably a good idea to move this one maybe further away. Probably should move this one down, move this one down and move this one up and bring this one, everything in here. Again, how you're going to do it is up to you. Okay, so we need to connect these two lines now and we're in business, so we need two more wires. Oops, and another wire. So basically what we have in here, we have two resistors, one of them is 10 and one of them is uh, 15. I mean, one of them is 10, one of them is five and they're sitting uh, in parallel to one another because these points are the same voltage and these points are the same voltage. So if I put this one in here, as if I put it in here, it's the same thing. So this is should be the same voltage all across now, okay? Because it's the same voltage. So right now it's hitting zero because there is no current flying through this thing in here. So if I close the circuit, I have my starting point, I have everything correct. So now, 25.19 and I have the current which is super high, 7.51. This is probably the highest current that we have recorded today. So it's gonna be, what is it? 25.19 divided by seven, it should be three point something, okay? 7.51 amps and the answer is 3.35, okay? So that is because the equivalent resistance at this point is exactly about uh, three and a third, okay? So this is slightly more than a three and a third. Again, change this value for another five more times to get more reading. This is 24, 13.89, and I have 4.14 amps. So this should be, again, 3 point something, 13.89 divided by 4.14 amps. It's again, 3.35, okay? 3.36 actually, according to my calculator. You're supposed to do this six times again, okay? You're supposed to do this six times and you collected the data and now you do the analysis. Okay, make sense? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, very good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, turn off my video, mute my microphone, and if you guys choose to work on it now, that's fine. 
If you want to finish it later on, that's fine too. And you can let me know if you need help with this lab in terms of something is not working or something you don't understand or something you need help with. Make sense? The only thing I ask is if you really want to, when you call me, please give me about 20 seconds or so so that I can turn on my microphone back again and answer you. If you want to do it later on, that's fine too. Okay. Yeah, fine is, uh, Excel is fine. Actually, it's, if you're going to use Excel, make sure you include the Excel file as part of your uh, upload too, okay? Properly labeled and everything is fine. Okay. If you're gonna have an Excel uh, data, that's fine too, okay? But also make sure you refer that in your lab report that all of your data is actually on Excel. But don't forget to answer the question, the questions. Because if I see, for example, that your table is missing data and I'm grading this, and then uh, of course, if I don't know what, what you're doing, I will just basically assume that you didn't do it. So please refer to that, that the fact that you're reporting the data, but just go ahead and copy it in Excel. I mean, in the PDF file, just to make sure. Or if you don't like to use a PDF file, that's up to you too. You don't have to, okay? So I'm gonna stop the recording. And then uh, if you guys choose to hang around, that's fine. If not, I will see you on Tuesday next week. Good. Stop the recording first. Thank you, Professor.